Good afternoon, everybody. This is Chuck Hughes. Uh, I want to uh, welcome you to our continuing uh, series of uh, online webinars where we um, discuss the uh, inner circle strategies and uh, implementing the uh, inner circle trades. And uh, today, <clears throat> we're going to focus on the uh, dividend strategy. And um, in previous uh, webinars, we uh, looked at the volatility strategies, in particular the married puts and the uh, option spreads and the buy right trades. And today, <clears throat> we're going to focus on another strategy that's been doing well in the, in the current market environment, and that's the um, dividend strategy. <clears throat> now, the uh, dividend strategy is very simple, um, and uh, we invest in companies who have a history of increasing their dividend. Uh, this, is, this is a, throughout history, this has been a very powerful indicator um, uh, to invest in companies who have a history of increasing their dividends. And um, we also like to compound the uh, results by reinvesting our dividends in additional shares of stock. And I'll show you some uh, examples, actual examples of that, and how uh, com compounding can work in your favor and uh, increase the uh, returns dramatically over time by simply uh, reinvesting the dividends in additional shares of stock. <clears throat> so um, most of the uh, dividend uh, trades that we have in the dividend portfolio fall into four uh, categories. We, we have uh, master limited partnerships. Um, we have real estate investment trusts. Uh, we have energy trusts income funds, and we do have some uh, dividend-paying stocks uh, in addition to these uh, four categories. And um, the, um, di the dividend growth rate um, is a very reliable forecaster of future earnings growth for a uh, company and its general uh, financial uh, health uh, because uh, corporate directors um, who are intimately familiar with the operations of the company, they're only going to raise dividends if they believe that the uh, future earnings can sustain the payout. So dividends are paid in cash, and uh, if they don't have the cash from future earnings, they're not going to increase their dividends. So, uh, you know, anytime you see a company that's um, – Consistently raising their dividends, it's it's a good sign that that company um, is going to have future earnings growth, and that uh, financially they can afford to pay those cash dividends. So it's a very simple theory, but uh, has worked very well over time. And uh, companies that increase their dividends are uh, usually make very good in investments over time. And as I mentioned, uh, we like to um, compound our results by uh, reinvesting cash dividends in additional shares of stock. And we'll show examples of that and how uh, powerful that strategy can be. <coughs> um, this uh, brokerage confirmation uh, shows that um, I bought 4,000 shares of um, American Capital at uh, 2856, and that's a real estate investment trust that invests in uh, uh, mortgages. And um, the uh, that 4,000 shares uh, of American Capital uh, cost me $114,248, and that includes the uh, commission. So um, uh, American Capital. <clears throat> pays um, a five dollar. Um, uh, it, it it pays a dollar uh, uh, sixty um, quarterly dividend. So yearly it pays uh, six 
uh, no, I'm sorry, that's a, it pays a a dollar forty, uh, quarterly dividend, and over, uh, a year, that's a five dollar and sixty cent, uh, annual dividend, and that's, that's about a twenty percent yield at the current price. So, um, this table, uh, displays, um, the, uh, compounding effects of my $114,000 investment in American capital. And <clears throat> with this um, um, table, I'm assuming that the dividend is maintained and it's not increased. And um, I'm also assuming that the stock price remains static. So the purpose of this table is just to show you um, how compounding works. And uh, it, it assumes no increase in the dividend and no increase in the stock. And uh, you can see uh, uh, after after the first year, I'm going to have a yearly income of twenty four thousand uh, dollars. After three years, I'm going to have a yearly income of thirty five thousand uh, dollars. Now that again, that's based on the one hundred fourteen thousand dollar investment. So that thirty five thousand dollars in income. Uh, is a 31% annual yield. And uh, you can see after five years, I'm going to have a $51,000 income and an annual yield of 45%. So uh, that's assuming that, again, that the uh, dividend remains uh, the same and that I reinvest the dividend in additional shares of American capital. So <clears throat> you gradually... Uh, start compounding your results every quarter when you reinvest those uh, quarterly dividends. And um, by year 10, um, I have $134,000 annual income and a an annual yield of 118%. And, um, you know, that 118%, that's cash on my cash investment. So, uh, you can see how um, slowly how the uh, your yield is going to build up every year uh, by reinvesting the uh, uh, quarterly dividends, and um, this allows me to um, uh, realize a hundred percent return in less than four years, two hundred percent return in less than six years. So. Um, Reinvesting the dividends and compounding the results uh, can result in uh, very, very good returns. <coughs> Here's a, um, a graph of the uh, uh, the total return uh, <coughs> based on my invest investment of uh, one hundred fourteen thousand dollars, and uh, it'll it'll uh, eventually <coughs> produce over a uh, four hundred. 400% return and a 118% yield after 10 years. Um, <clears throat> here's an example of some of my uh, brokerage confirmations, and it's just showing dividends that I received in my account. Uh, these dividends total about $46,000. And again, what I do is uh, I'll go ahead and reinvest these dividends. And uh, most brokerage houses and most companies will allow you to reinvest those dividends at, with no commission cost, and it's set up automatically so that <clears throat> you buy uh, additional shares every time you receive that quarterly dividend. So I have it set up automatically with my broker, and when it, whenever I receive that quarterly dividend, I purchase additional shares in the uh, company. <clears throat> Here's a snapshot of uh, of the uh, Inner Circle Dividend Portfolio uh, as of yesterday. And w with the Dividend Portfolio, uh, when we receive a dividend, um, it reduces the cost basis of the stock and, again, allows us to uh, compound our results. So you can see, that as of yesterday, the uh, uh, Dividend Portfolio had a $148,000 uh, open trade profit and uh, an average return of 81%. So that's a, that's a great return for uh, the current market conditions. And um, 
the uh, return in this portfolio doesn't tend to fluctuate as much as other portfolios uh, because uh, the average yield now on, on this portfolio is pretty high, and uh, <clears throat> and we compound the uh, dividends and reinvest them, and uh, as a result, uh, it doesn't fluctuate as much as other portfolios and has shown uh, pretty uh, steady growth, and it's a great, great strategy for uh, current market conditions. And uh, <clears throat> in a previous webinar, we looked at uh, uh, buying uh, put options on our dividend-paying stocks um, to help protect the uh, value of the stock, and, you know, we can use the uh, dividends to help pay for the put options. So all in all, this is a very low-risk strategy. Um, th this is an example of... Uh, uh, a stock I purchased and then simultaneously uh, purchased a put option. I, I purchased Royal Dutch, Royal Dutch Petroleum stock and then simultaneously uh, uh, purchased the 60-strike uh, put option. So I bought the stock for 60.12 points and then purchased uh, a 60-strike put option for 5.5 points. And um, we saw that... Uh, if uh, Royal Dutch continues to um, uh, pay the uh, quarterly dividend at, at the time was uh, 67 and a half cents, if it continues to pay that quarterly dividend, um, that reduces the cost of the put. The put cost uh, five dollars and fifty cents, and uh, over this time time period, which is about a 22 month time period, I'm going to collect. Uh, $473 in dividends, and as you can see, that almost pays for the, uh, the, the almost the total cost of the put. So uh, this reduces the risk, and um, my maximum risk on this trade for purchasing 100 shares and purchasing one put option is $90, or 1.4%. So over that 22-month period, I have a lot of time for this stock to go up in price, in the meantime, my maximum risk is 1.4%, and um, uh, my profit potential uh, is also, uh, it's not that different than the actual price appreciation for the stock. In other words, whenever, whenever you buy the put option, of course, that's going to reduce your uh, return potential uh, based on the cost of the put option. But you can see if the stock goes up, 40% uh, with this trade, uh, I would realize a 35.5% return for the uh, married put trade. So um, I sacrifice a little bit of the return potential, but it's a trade-off because if the stock goes down 50%, uh, my maximum uh, risk is still 1.4%. So this, this is a great strategy for volatile markets and um you know, anytime you can go 22 months with only uh, a 1.4% maximum risk, then it allows you to hold this position over that 22-month period. And then, uh, of course, if Royal Dutch shot stock goes up, you can uh, exit this trade at any time. And uh, But in the meantime, you have 22 months of protection, maximum risk of 1.4%. So this is a great strategy for... Uh, the current market conditions, and um, our um, married put portfolio uh, currently has uh, over $70,000 in uh, open trade profits and an average return of 41%. And um, most of the most of the stocks in the married put portfolio are dividend-paying stocks. So th this is this is a, a, a great way to um, uh, protect the profits you have on a dividend-paying stock uh, it, by purchasing um, a put option. And in this portfolio, <clears throat> there's there's two ways to um, initiate a married put trade. You can either purchase a stock and purchase the put option simultaneously, uh, or if you have a profit in an existing stock, uh, you can you can purchase a put option at a later date 
to help protect those profits. And uh, in this portfolio, we have a combination of uh, stocks and puts that we bought simultaneously, and then we also have some uh, where we legged into the uh, spread. Uh, when we had a profit on the stock, we purchased a put option, and that uh, provided downside protection uh, for the for the uh, current profit. And here's uh, one, one of the trades in the portfolio. This is for uh, Annaly Capital, and um, we purchased uh, Annaly Capital, and we have a, a, a profit in the stock, uh, and uh, it, it pays about a 15% dividend. So, um, and, and this is this is one of the actual trades in, in the in the uh, married put portfolio. And um, uh, so we had a profit in Annaly Capital, and then on September 12th, uh, we bought the 17 and a half strike put option uh, for 4.05 points. And annually pays a quarterly dividend of uh, 60 cents. So um, the um, put premium was four dollars and five cents uh, annually over that period. This is about a uh, uh, oh, let's see, I guess about a 16 month period. Um, it's going to pay 300 dollars in dividends. So um, that covers a, a big part of the uh, four dollar and five cent put premium. And uh, more importantly, you can see, even if Annaly stock drops 50%, we're going to realize a 69% return for this trade. And that's because uh, when you have the 17 and a half put option, the value of the spread can never drop below 17 and a half. So um, even if this, this, the uh, stock, underlying stock declines substantially, we're, we're still going to have a good trade. Uh, still going to have a good return for this trade uh, because the uh, because of the uh, put option we purchased, and you can see it pretty much uh, protects the uh, stock uh, regardless of whether the stock goes down or stays flat or goes up. Uh, however, once the stock starts uh, getting above 17 and a half, then this this 69% return uh, will start increasing uh, because uh, with married puts, the um, return potential is not limited. So if the stock really rallies from here and next year is trading at uh, 25, let's say, then uh, this return will be substantially higher uh, because your profit potential is not limited with these married puts. So... Um, the uh, uh, combination of uh, the dividend-paying stocks, uh, which are solid companies to start with, because we, you know, we purchase uh, companies that uh, increase their quarterly dividends. Uh, we combine that with the compounding of the dividends, and then the married put strategy. And we have a very, very low-risk strategy. Uh, or uh, any type of uh, market condition. So th this is a great, uh, th these strategies have been working great for us. Here's another example of uh, one of the uh, uh, married put trades currently in the portfolio. This is for uh, enterprise products. And with this one, um, we, uh, we have a minimum return, even if the stock goes down 50%. Of 78.6 percent, and um, uh, if the stock is flat, we still have a 78 uh, percent return. If the stock goes up, we have a 78 percent return, and um, we have the 40 strike put. So if the um, stock starts to go above 40, then um, our this this profit could actually start increasing to 78.6% because, again, the uh, uh, return potential is not limited. And um, here's an example for uh, uh, McDonald's. We have a married put for McDonald's, and uh, our minimum return on this trade is 43.7%.
So uh, all in all, a great um, strategy uh, in, in this current uh, market environment. And um, I also wanted to talk today about um, the Master Limited Partnerships. Um, we, we have uh, six or seven of these uh, Master Limited Partnerships in our uh, dividend portfolio. And um, I just wanted to talk about the structure of Master Limited Partnerships. Uh, partnerships and why they um, have been, uh, why they've returned uh, such good profits over the years. And um, uh, MLPs, they do not pay any um, uh, corporate in income tax. Um, and uh, that gives them a, a big advantage over other dividend paying stocks that have to pay a corporate tax. So MLPs pay no corporate income tax gives them a huge advantage over other dividend-paying stocks that do have to pay a corporate tax. Um, and um, part, of, part of the uh, structure of the MLPs is that they have to pay out all their profits to uh, their shareholders. So you, you have a great combination of them having to pay out their profits, uh, don't pay any corporate income tax, and then there's even a further benefit uh, with MLP dividends, uh, which are called distributions. Um, the IRS generally considers 80 to 90 percent of the MLP distributions as a return of capital, uh, which means that you can defer paying taxes on those distributions until you sell your units, and then you would pay a capital gains tax. So um, that's 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 a, a third benefit of uh, these of the structure of these MLPs. So um, so due to this favorable tax treatment for these MLPs, they've attracted uh, companies in a variety of industries, including um, oil and gas exploration. Uh, coal mining companies, uh, energy pipelines, uh, timber, fertilizers, and real estate. Um, so again, they pay no corporate income tax, have to distribute all their profits to their shareholders, and uh, as a result, you know, the, these have been great investments uh, over time, and they've handily beat all, all the stock indexes. Uh, on return because of these uh, special advantages. And again, with the MLP strategy, um, we want to buy MLPs that have a history of raising their dividends, and then we want to reinvest those dividends in additional shares uh, to compound returns. And um, I wanted to show you an example of, uh, uh, of an MLP. This, this is for... Um, uh, Kinder Morgan Partnerships, and what I did is I, I went back to see um, how, how much in distributions you would receive if you invested $25,000 in Kinder Morgan uh, 15 years ago. So um, I did this study, and uh, a $25,000 investment in Kinder Morgan 15 years ago uh, you would have you would have received over one hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars in distributions. So, um, you know, Kinder Morgan has a history of constantly increasing their uh, payouts, and um, uh, you can see on a twenty five thousand dollar investment, you're going to get one hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars in cash distribution. So that's that's a tremendous return. For such a low risk investment, and this this is a graph here of their uh, distributions. So this these these are cash distributions. You know you receive every quarter for uh, Kinder Morgan, and you can see it's been uh, very steadily increasing here through um, any any type of market conditions. So um, this this is an example of how uh, limited partnerships can outperform. Um, 
the stock indexes and other dividend-paying stocks because of their special structure. So in any time that you can receive $169,000 return on a $25,000 investment, low-risk investment, I would say that's pretty good. So um, that that's a good example of uh, uh, the, the advantages uh, that you get from investing in MLPs. And as I said, that's a large part of our dividend portfolio. And uh, here's <clears throat> here's an example of uh, uh, the total return for Kinder Morgan. Now, this includes dividends, and it also includes uh, appreciation in the stock. So uh, since 1992, it's had a uh, 5,000% return and um, has outperformed just about any investment out there. And uh, you can see uh, Kinder Morgan does have price fluctuations in the stock, but not as much as com- compared to, say, the S&P index or other other stocks, uh, because it's it's uh, it pays such a, a good di- good steady dividend and it increases that dividend. Uh, the volatility is less and your risk is less. And um, this is this is a great place to invest you know, that portion of your portfolio uh, that you want to derive income from or for retirement. And what I did is I uh, I looked at um, the uh, returns from a sampling of uh, MLPs in different industries and compared that to the uh, S&P 500 index. And uh, the price charts are all I'm going to be showing here uh, display the return for the MLP versus the S&P 500 index over the past 10 years. And uh, the first example is for New England Realty uh, MLP. And uh, over the past 10 years, that's had a uh, return of 462%. Uh, versus 9% for the S&P, so far outperformed the uh, S&P. And of these five examples I'm about to show you, the average return for these for these five MLPs over the past 10 years has been 1,232% average return versus 9% for the S&P index. So you can see uh, these MLPs far outperformed uh, the S&P and probably most other investments out there. And, um, again, it's due to the uh, favorable uh, tax structure of these uh, MLTs. Uh, here's another example. Over the last 10 years, Alliance Resource uh, uh, produced a 1,274% return versus uh, 9% for the S&P index. And uh, here's another Example, this is Terra Nitrogen. This is a uh, fertilizer company, and uh, it's an MLP structure. And over the past 10 years, it's had a 3,355% return versus uh, a 9% return for the S&P index. So, again, far outperforming uh, the S&P. And um, <clears throat> this is Magellan Midstream. This is an um, energy pipeline company. And um, similar to uh, Kinder Morgan, and it's had a 665% return versus 9% for um, the S&P over the past 10 years. And uh, I have one more example here. Uh, This is for Capano Energy. This is oil exploration uh, MLP, and it's had a uh, 407% return versus a 9% return for the S&P. So, um, all in all, the uh, uh, just to summarize uh, our dividend strategy um, with over an 80% uh, open trade profit return um, and low volatility has is is a great strategy uh, for today's current uh, volatile markets, and it's a great way to uh, to a great vehicle to place your uh, uh, your investments uh, that you want to allocate to either income or retirement. And um, uh, 
Uh, I do this in my own retirement uh, plans. I I have a lot of these uh, income-producing stocks, and I just simply compound the returns. And over time, this this has been a um, uh, a great a, a great strategy. So, uh, all right, that concludes my presentation for the dividend strategy, and um, uh, I'd be glad to answer any uh, questions you may have, and um, <clears throat> let's see, um, here, here's uh, a question from Mark, is today's webinar archived on the website, and uh, yes, Mark, it is, it is uh, archived along with the other webinars, and um, you, you can access these webinars anytime you want uh, by just uh, uh, going into the members uh, section and uh, click, click the uh, webinars link. <coughs> okay, here's here's a, a question. Um, I'm mostly in cash. Do you think we may have a better buy opportunities ahead? and should move into these long strategies at this time or wait for a better buying opportunity. And um, uh, there, there's there's no way to predict what the future brings. Um, and um, uh, I, I simply um, allocate my funds. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll purchase, uh, whether it's the dividend, paying stocks, or options, uh, or buy right trades. I usually allocate my capital in increments. Um, I mention this uh, a lot in my books. I'll allocate my capital in uh, increments because you know there's no way to predict the future price movement of the of the market. So I think if you buy in increments and sell in increments, uh, you can help alleviate some of that entry risk, uh, timing risk on you know the the stock market. So uh, to answer your your question. Um, I uh, simply follow the strategies and increment uh, or trade my funds in increments. So um, there, there's no way to predict if this is a good time right now. Uh, if I was to guess, I would say uh, it is a good time right now to get into these long investments because um, the U.S. stock market is uh, way undervalued compared to what it has been historically, and that's mainly due to the problems in Europe. And uh, with the uh, S&P trading around 11 times forward earnings, um, that historically, that's a very, very low valuation for the S&P. And the uh, U.S. economy has been performing okay. I wouldn't say great, but it's performing okay. And anytime you have uh, an 11 PE on the S&P with interest rates this low, uh, historically, this, you know, that, that would have been a, a great buying opportunity. So if I was to guess, I would say this period is a great time to be buying U.S. stocks. And uh, that brings up another um, topic. Uh, in future webinars, I'm going to look at uh, my fundamental indicators I use to uh, select stocks. And... My fundamental indicators indicate right now that quality U.S. stocks, quality growth stocks in the U.S. Uh, are probably at their lowest valuations ever. And um, we'll, we'll get into that in detail on, on the uh, fundamental indicators I used and how undervalued these uh, quality stocks are right now. So <clears throat> I think it's a good opportunity right now to go long um, in quality uh, U.S. companies, and um, I'll be recommending these companies um, as time goes by uh, for the various inner circle portfolios, not only the stock portfolio, but the dividend portfolio and the option portfolio and the option spreads and um, married puts and buy rights. So I'll be... Uh, uh, slowly implementing um, these trades for these quality companies that are way undervalued compared to historical standards uh, over uh, the next several months. Okay, here's, here's a 
question from Adrian. Uh, are there option plays on MLPs as well? And yes, uh, Adrian, there's, there's option plays on the MLPs. Um, for a lot of them, you, you can buy a call option, but that defeats the whole purpose of, earn, of owning an MLP because you want to be receiving those distributions and reinvesting those distributions in additional share so you can compound your results. So if you own a call option, you're not going to get the distribution. So that, that pretty much defeats the uh, purpose of owning the MLPs. Okay, here's here's a question for Gary. Uh, what signals do you use for entering a dividend-paying stock or MLP? And Gary, I, um, I the, the first thing I look at is uh, uh, the growth in dividends, and that's first and foremost. So if the company has a long history of growing your dividends, uh, that's that's a company I, I, I want to invest in. Um, but I'll also use uh, are simple trend following indicators and you know I, I want the stock to be in a price uptrend uh, when I purchase it uh, and that that prevents you from owning stocks during a bear market <laughs> so uh, to answer your question I use the uh, the same trend following indicators I use to purchase stocks to purchase the uh, dividend stocks and I have an additional qualifier I like to look at dividend-paying stocks that have a, a long history of increasing their uh, dividends. Okay, here's a, a question from Mark. Could you explain again what you did with buying the stock and then selling a put with a high strike and an extended expiration date? And Mark, uh, you're talking about the married put strategy. And we don't sell a put with a higher strike price. We buy the put. Uh, we don't sell the put. We buy the put for protection. If you sold the, if you sold the put, you'd have a double long position with no protection. And um, I went into um, uh, detail on the married put strategy in in a previous webinar. So if you look at that, um, you'll see all the details of that strategy and how to how to implement the uh, strategy and also the reasoning uh, behind it. And, um, okay, uh, will married put calculator be available? And uh, it is it is available. Um, so uh, that, that is available. Um, I think we uh, had that up and running uh, as of uh, a couple weeks ago. So uh, the married put calculators available. So if you want to start uh, looking at that married put strategy and uh, get a feel for it, uh, you know, start uh, entering the uh, stock price in there, the uh, quarterly dividend and the uh, time period uh, for the put option as well as the strike and the put price. And then you can see the profit potential for that trade before you take it. That's the value of these calculators. You can see the profit potential before you take the trade, and you can see what your maximum risk is and also what your potential is if the stock uh, increases in price. Okay, here's here's a question uh, from Dennis. Where are the MLP portfolios on the website? And Dennis, they're in the uh, dividend portfolio. We have... Uh, uh, I want to say seven, seven or eight of the uh, MLPs in the uh, dividend portfolio. Okay, here's a, here's a question from Michael. When would you consider selling these stocks? And uh, Michael, I use the same uh, money management uh, principles with the dividend-paying stocks as I do with uh, the stocks in the stock portfolio in. If we incur a 10 to 15 percent loss from our entry price, then we just simply exit uh, because we don't we don't want uh, a small loss to develop into a big loss, which can really hurt your portfolio. So, to answer your question, uh, we use the same money management principles we do for the um, stock portfolio. And um, uh, here's here's a 
question from Gary, what's the best place to find a list of companies with a history of increasing dividends? And uh, probably the best place is the mergence of uh, what they call uh, dividend achievers. And uh, dividend achievers are companies that have increased their dividends uh, consistently for at least a 10-year period. So in other words, they had a they had an increase in their dividend uh, for 10 years in a row. If, if they increase their dividend 10 years in a row, uh, then they'll make the list of dividend, what they call dividend achievers. So that's, that's the best place to uh, look for stocks that increase their dividend. I think there's about, last time I looked, at over 300 companies uh, on the mergence uh, dividend achievers list. So... They, they have um, a lot of great stocks in that list that have uh, consistently raised their dividends. They even have stocks that have uh, consistently raised their dividends every year over the past 30, 40, or even 50 years. So that, that's a great list of uh, stocks. Okay, and here's uh, a question from Gary uh, should we be entering M MLPs that are an old position by using Keltner channels or or unbalanced volume trending MLPs? And uh, yeah, Gary, you, you could you could uh, use those uh, indicators um, or just simply um, uh, purchase the uh, MLPs that are listed as a buy. And um, uh, I realize there's there's you know there's I think there's a 20 or so positions in the dividend portfolio. So um, if I was allocating my funds, I would uh, pick out five stocks in the dividend portfolio in different industries, like an MLP, a real estate investment trust, a dividend-paying stock, an energy trust, et cetera. I'd pick out five stocks if I was allocating my funds in different industries uh, and buy the stocks that are uh, labeled as a buy. Okay, I think that's, um, I think I answered, uh, oh, here's, here's a question from Gary. What about the tax impact of paying taxes on reinvested dividends? And Gary, I'm, I'm not a, a, a tax uh, advisor, so um, I, I would consult my tax advisor. I don't, I don't want to give uh, tax advice. Uh, I'm not qualified to do that, and uh, securities regulations don't allow me to do that. So I would uh, consult my tax advisor on that. Okay, um, that is it on the questions. I think I've answered everybody's question. Uh, I want to thank everybody for um, attending today, and I'm looking forward to our next webinar, and we'll discuss uh, another one of the uh, inner circle strategies, and that will be in two weeks. So uh, have a great day, and thanks for listening, uh, and I wish you all the best in investing success. Thanks a lot.